we are in the midst of a cost of living crisis that is hitting people hard, an NHS crisis that is pushing staff to breaking point and putting patients' lives at risk, and a wider economic crisis that is leading to business closures across Scotland, made worse by a flawed and chaotic deposit return scheme led by an incompetent government. And at the same time, the SNP has turned in on themselves, more interested in scoring political points against each other rather than focusing on the people's priorities. At this time of crisis, for business, for families and patients, why is it that all people in Scotland see is a government divided and in chaos? First Minister. I mean, presiding officer, I have to say, I mean, maybe somebody here can help me. I've, I've lost count of the number of leadership elections yeah. that have taken place in the Conservative and Labour parties yeah. in the years I've stood here uh, as First Minister. Uh, I think people in Scotland uh, will welcome seeing a robust debate about the future of our country, uh, covering all of the things that Anna Sarwar has just talked about. Um, and uh, they will appreciate uh, seeing candidates for leadership setting out proposals to build on the actions that this government has taken in recent years. Uh, Anna Sarwar talks about the cost of living crisis. One of the things that I am proudest of uh, in my time as First Minister, and always will be proud of, is the game-changing Scottish child payment, transformational for families and children across this country, doing more than anything across these islands to lift children out of poverty. I'm proud of that, and I'm confident that whoever succeeds me as First Minister will continue with that record of success. Yeah. Anna Sarwar. It would be interesting to hear if Nicola Sturgeon is proud of the candidates trashing a record in government over the last uh, couple of weeks, because the choice the people of Scotland are being offered by the SNP to replace Nicola Sturgeon is woeful. We have a health secretary who is closing an intensive care unit in air after promising to save it just a few weeks ago, a finance secretary who repeatedly blocked £15 an hour for care workers, who now miraculously is calling for it, and Ash Regan, who thinks Scotland could set up a central bank within weeks. <laughs> Three candidates falling over each other to distance themselves from their own government's policies. All you turning on the flawed DRS scheme, all wanting to hit the brakes on a national care service, and all all over the place on independence. Now, Nicola Sturgeon gave all of these candidates their first step up in politics. So, I wonder, First Minister, with the benefit of hindsight, which one do you regret appointing the most? <laughs> First Minister. I'm proud of all of the governments I've led and I'm proud of those who have served in uh, these governments. And the record of, record of government, I, I said on the day, presiding officer, I said on the day uh, that I announced that I would be stepping down as First Minister, that nobody would entice me uh, into expressing a preference for my successor. And Anna Sarwar is not going to manage to do that either. Uh, but I am confident whoever succeeds me will continue with that record of success because ultimately of course uh, my record in government, uh, the record of uh, my ministerial team in government will not be judged by Anna Sarwar or Douglas Ross, it will be judged by the people of Scotland and actually in my time as First Minister it has Let's been hear judged the First Minister. by the people of Scotland on no fewer than eight occasions, eight landslide election victories and um, I think that's the vote of confidence in my record as First Minister that I will continue to be proud of. <laughs> Anna Sarwar. At the start of this contest, Nicola Sturgeon told us that it would be a chance for Scotland to see the best talent the SNP has to offer. <laughs> so here we are, the top three. Ash Regan, backed by Alex Salmond. Kate Forbes, backed by Jacob Rees-Mogg. And the Scottish Greens candidate, Hamza Youssef, backed by Peter Morell. <laughs> now, it may be funny, but actually this is really serious because we have 770,000 people on an NHS waiting list. We have families struggling to put food on the table and pay their bills and businesses are shutting down because of this government's incompetence and anti-business agenda. At this time of national crisis, when people need a competent government that is on their side, is this really the best the SNP has to offer? First Minister. I think if I was, uh, and I know it's quite hard for me to imagine this, but if I was in the shoes of Anna Sarwar uh, or, or Douglas Ross, what I'd be uh, more worried about than whatever was happening in the SNP leadership election campaign was why it is that the only political game in town remains the SNP yeah. and they are lagging so yeah. far behind yeah. after 16 years of an SNP government. That says the people of Scotland continue to put their trust in us. And why do they do that? Take, take employment in Scotland at the highest uh, level I think on record, unemployment at the lowest yep. uh, level. We're seeing in a very, very challenging 
time for a national health service, an increase in the number of patients being treated, the longest waits falling. Uh, we are seeing a, a situation which I hear Christine Graham say no strikes in our national health service, which makes us the only nation in the UK to have achieved that. We continue to be the best performing part of the UK outside of London when it comes to attracting inward investment yeah. into our country. We're lifting more children out of poverty than any other part of the UK. That is why the Scottish people continue to trust the SNP and government. That is true today. And I believe whoever succeeds me as First Minister, that is going to continue to be true for a long, long time to come as we continue and complete the journey to Scotland becoming an independent country.